basically talking to you before, like, it totally lowered my expectations for the record, then I heard it. I was completely blown away. I don't know a lot about, like, the whole, like, about this, this, you know, the recording, the story behind it, but I'm guessing it's, like, the quickest and most kind of intensely worked album you've ever done. Most of the records I've done are sort of, the, the songs just accumulated. Like, uh, I'll hook up with somebody and we'll record a few songs. And then the album, kind of over a long period of time, glues together, you know, all these songs come together. And this was just uh, the first time I'd just gone into a studio. Let's book two weeks and just kind of do it. Right. And so it was done really quick, a really short amount of time. Do you have any preconceived idea, stylistically, of what you're going to do when you went in? The only thing I had was the the songs were written. And the other, uh, Mel Gold and uh, Odele, most of the songs hadn't been written. I'd go into the studio, just kind of build these songs piece by piece, and then at the end, the song would be written. So I kind of I did everything backwards this time. I right. like had these songs, but nobody knew the songs. It was basically uh, myself and several of the musicians set up in a room with mics. And there's a couple of songs where even we did the vocal live. And uh, I was just trying to get that sound where every musician is in each other's microphone, you know? Like, music's recorded very separately now. Yeah. It's really antiseptic and sort of uh, doesn't... There's not that, that quality of the song just uh, being like this one piece. You hear, like, strings come in, and it'll just be, uh, you know, it, it'll sound very separate from the track, and that's something that's really uh, prized as a good quality and good sound, good engineering, good uh, recording. I think we were trying to... Uh, get something where it was just you couldn't really tell what instrument was what it yeah i know yeah totally i was wondering if those are string sections or samples no those really are like, actually wow. string sections yeah i'd never done that it was fun so the way we mixed it we kind of turned the orchestra into more of a an atmosphere yeah than an actual orchestra because it's sort of like when the song ends, you feel almost like it was just going on in the background the whole time and now you just noticed it yeah i wanted it to sound like a sea cave or something you know but I think that's like something really common in how uh, music's made now, that people tend to record, like you can hear every little part. And I, I just like that thing where everything just washes together and it's, you can't really tell what's what. That goes back to the days when there was just one mic, so everything was being picked up in the same filter. Yeah. Did you intentionally leave in like studio voices and things like that. I always try to leave in the mistakes. That, that's the interesting s stuff. Somebody walked into the room while you were doing the falsetto lead and uh, said the burritos are here. You know, that's the best part usually. <laughs> you know, that's the part that people remember. And what were some of the mistakes that were left on the, this one? Um, not too many. It's <laughs> <laughs> a pretty clean cut. <laughs> right. Even the jam at the end of the one that degenerates into this weird kind of... Oh, with the noise and stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a late night. That's on um, Canceled Check. Yeah. We'd rented all this percussion, and uh, um, we had all this stuff, so um, the song sort of was dying out, and we didn't really know how to end it, so we just all went into the room and took all the stuff, and we had shakers and coffee cups, and stuff was just flying. It was this melee of studio gear, and... People got hurt, actually. Some, <laughs> I think uh, there's one part where you hear somebody was um, leaping into the air, and another guy stood up at the exact time, and they fell over, and, and it was a mess. But uh, that's how we achieved that effect. We went that extra three centimeters for our <laughs> art. You know? Yeah, exactly. It was sort of a, a 3 a.m. Hollywood Studio B serenity, you know? And you put your blood into this record? Yes, yeah. we do in all of them. <laughs> and this, and what's, there's like that weird... Um... Actually, my bass player on one of the songs was bleeding on his finger. <laughs> but he's into that, you know. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really count. And I, and I was also going to ask um, the whole... Um, I mean, I guess all the, all the, like, the keyboards and the extra sounds and that, that's all Roger Manning? Or... Yeah, no, I played a lot of them uh -huh. too. But he did, yeah, he played a lot. He's known as a half of the... The Moog cookbook, right. and uh, so he had this arsenal of uh, incredible synthesizers and 
you know, just things that should be in museums. You know, it was a, every every day he like did, never ceased to amaze us with some crazy, you know, Italian organ that looked like a vitamin or something. You know, a giant, you know, things that that didn't even need to make music. They were just so beautiful or strange. Yeah. And, and what, what, like, what were some of the things he used? Uh, I wouldn't know all the names. There was so many of them. But um, I guess there was some Moog. You know, a lot of older analog type synthesizers. I was always the one trying to bring in more newer, modern, like more mass-produced contemporary stuff. I'm always interested in trying to get those kind of instruments to sound cool. It's pretty easy to like plug in something from the early 70s and it's like, oh, it's great. You've heard it on a million records before. I think it's kind of interesting to take something that hasn't been really used. Or I think a lot of keyboards now tend to have a lot of techno and, and rave sounds and nobody really uses those, uh, those sounds in the context of uh, like singer-songwriter. Things. So I, I brought a few keyboards like that, a few of those kind of elements. And whose idea was the harpsichord? What's that? Who wasn't? Isn't there? I hear like a harpsichord in there. Yeah, I really wanted to use a harpsichord. Um, thing is, you got to tune the thing like every day. It's like the thing goes out of tune like every hour, and there's hundreds of strings, and it's a really uh, the most insanely high maintenance instrument ever invented. But it's just so pleasing. Yeah. Like the and, real one. And it's in that. Um, we live again, right? It's got yeah, like a total yeah, yeah. Sense and peppermint vibe. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>